So today's video is going to be another solved true crime case and today's case is actually going to be from Australia. And I know I don't talk about locations of the cases that I cover too much but I want to start covering more kind of worldwide cases. I don't know a better way to put that. I know a lot of the cases that I cover are from the UK and I do want to keep it like that but I definitely want to start doing like at least one a week from elsewhere in the world so like Australia, America, different non-English speaking countries. However those ones are a little bit harder to do because articles aren't in English and I only speak English. Anyway, this intro has been long enough. Let me just do my disclaimer that I mean absolutely no disrespect to anyone that I talk about in this video. This is all just information that I have found on the internet and I'm compiling into one video. So today we're going to be talking about the solved case of Maria Corp. So Maria Corp, formerly Maria Matilde, was a 50 year old Australian woman born January 14th, 1955 in Portugal. She was born in Portugal, but her parents were Australian. She grew up in Australia later in her life. She was just born elsewhere, you know? Maria grew up in Melbourne in Australia and she was very religious. She was a very strict Christian. She was very proud of her faith. Maria actually married once before and her and her husband had a daughter named Laura. However, after a few years, her husband sadly passed away, leaving Maria a widow. And then in May of 1990, she met who would soon become her second husband, Joseph Corp. At first, Maria just wasn't interested. She would rebuff all of his advances and he was just very persistent. And eventually, after a few months, they were married. Joe actually had two children to a previous marriage himself. So between them, they had three children. However, I don't think Joe's children lived with him. They were called Mia and Stephen. I believe that they lived with their mother. I believe in their kind of household it was just Maria, Joe and Maria's daughter Laura and they had a really happy like small family. Joe was obsessed with Maria. It was just a really happy family. Money was pretty tight for the Corp family however this didn't stop Joseph from going out and buying an empty lot and the Corp family built their own kind of dream home on this lot. Joe worked constantly, Maria had two jobs which led to her working over 12 hours a day. Eventually the dream home was finished and it was everything that they wanted and it was then when Maria realised that she was pregnant with her and Joe's own child and they had a lovely little boy called Damien. They were a typical perfect family. Honestly, they never argued, barely argued anyway, even if they did argue a little bit. They had the gorgeous house, the gorgeous family. They now had their own child between them. Like, everything was perfect for that family until Maria started noticing little off things about Joe. He began working away a lot and due to his job, he did work away sometimes, but at this point it was becoming more and more frequent. It was like at least once a month, sometimes twice a month. And this planted a little seed of doubt in Maria's head that maybe he wasn't faithful. And so she began digging, doing her own investigative work and she went through Joe's old bank statements. And she found that while he was supposed to be out on a business trip in Sydney, he'd actually been withdrawing money in Victoria which are two completely different places. He tried to explain it away to Maria by saying, well, I went to two different places on this business trip. I wasn't constantly in Sydney, but even though she kind of forgave him and accepted it, she never truly forgot what had happened. But Maria wasn't completely convinced. She just kind of accepted his excuse because she didn't want to start arguments. He did have a valid excuse even if she didn't believe it 100%. And so while Joe was out on another one of his business trips, Maria decided to check his computer. And when she did, it just confirmed all of her suspicions. Joe had a profile on a dating website, but this wasn't just any dating website. This was a dating website for couples, for couples to meet other couples and get together. And the couple that Joe was in on this website was not him and Maria, it was him and another woman. Joe was in a secret relationship with 38 year old single mother Tanya Herman and this time when Maria found out and confronted him about it Joe knew that he could lose his whole family over this. There was no way that he could talk himself out of it because Maria had proof now. So Joe was begging for forgiveness. She was so forgiving. She was such a loving person. She always wanted to see the best in people and so she gave him another chance. This was probably like his third chance at this point and at this point she'd seen proof as well so she knew that this was going on 
but she forgave him. She forgave him, but she didn't forget. She stayed with him for the sake of the kids, for the sake of their marriage, because she loved this man, but she never truly, in the back of her mind, forgot what he did. She always, she'd never use it against him, but she was always very wary of what he'd done. And Jo knew that he was so close to losing Maria. Had she not been a very loving, forgiving person, he would have lost her then. And so he knew that she was almost at the very end of a tether. And so Jo knew that he had to give up the side relationship with Tanya Herman. He needed to just cut it off and he needed to focus on his marriage, his kids, his house. He needed to make this marriage with Maria work. So Joe stopped going on these business trips and he needed to find a way to cut off Tanya Herman to the point where she just wouldn't bother contacting him. Joe Corp emailed Tanya Herman pretending to be an official, not pretending to be himself, not being himself, he was pretending to be an official, saying that Joe had died in a car crash in Barcelona. Obviously Tanya was heartbroken, even though she was his mistress, she was still in a relationship with this man. Her boyfriend had just been killed in a car crash. She was heartbroken. But after a month or so of Joe being faithful to Maria, he just couldn't do it anymore. He only lasted a month and he turned back up on Tanya Herman's doorstep and said, I wasn't actually dead, I was just really severely injured. And Tanya was reluctant to take him back at first. Obviously, this man had just lied to her. The love of her life, as far as she knew, had just lied to her, saying that he was dead to get her to stop talking to him, and now he was back trying to get her back. So she was very reluctant to take him back at first. So Joe was constantly trying to win Tanya over, as if he didn't have enough at home with Maria. He was constantly trying to get his side woman back, and it just wasn't working. Tanya just wasn't taking him back. And so he thought to himself, what can I do to get this woman back? And he proposed to her. That was the thing that he thought would win her back. And it worked. So Joe had a wife at home, Maria, and now he also had a fiance, Tanya. And Tanya also had a daughter. So now he just had so many children, so many spouses. Meanwhile, Maria was back at home thinking that Joe had completely cut off Tanya Herman, thinking that everything was good, their marriage was back on track, and she was actually packing, while he was out proposing to this other woman, she was packing for their second honeymoon. They were going on holiday and he called it their second honeymoon. They were gonna renew their vows. They were gonna have a fresh start while he was out proposing to another woman. And then after another month of Joe trying to juggle these two separate lives, these two separate relationships, Maria found his phone and found texts from Tanya Herman. But Joe threatened Maria this time. He didn't just beg for her to come back. He threatened her, saying that if she left him, he'd kill himself. And Maria, like I said, she was such a kind-hearted, loving person. She never wanted that for anyone, especially the man that she loved. Yes, he cheated on her several times. He was horrible to her but she loved him and she didn't want the love of her life to kill himself over her. And so she felt there was no other option than to just stay with him and hope that he just cut Tanya off. So they stayed together and everyone knew what was happening. Tanya knew that Maria was still with him. Maria knew that he was still with Tanya. He was still juggling these two relationships and no one was happy, but everyone was just kind of getting on with it. Maria knew that he was with Tanya, like I said, but she didn't know that he'd proposed to her. And I don't know if things would have been different if she knew that he proposed to her, possibly. Then in early 2005, and I couldn't find the reason for this, but Maria took out an intervention order against her husband, Joe. This intervention order said that Joe couldn't assault, harass, molest, threaten, or intimidate Maria Corp. Like I said, I couldn't find out why she did this, but I'm assuming it was for the last part of that kind of agreement, threatening. I assume it was so that he couldn't use suicide as a threat against her. If she ever tried to leave him, he couldn't say, well, I'm gonna kill myself if you leave me. There was no evidence that Joe was ever abusive towards Maria or violent or like sexually abusive. There was no reports of anything like that. So I do, I do think that it could have been about the suicide threats. Then on Wednesday, February 9th, 2005, Maria Corp failed to pick up her son Damien from school. And Maria had never done this before. She'd never even been late to pick up Damien from school, never mind forgetting completely. Maria was reported missing that same day. Normally the family of the person that's gone missing wait until like maybe the next day or something because 
there's sometimes an explanation more often than not there is an explanation but this was so far out of Maria's character that her family thought something has to be wrong this is not normal and so they felt it was a missing person the last person that reported seeing Maria Corp that day was Joe Corp he said that he saw her at 6 30 a.m that morning before he left for work and Maria was still at home. So all of Maria's family were questioned, not as suspects, there was like Joe, the kids, her friends, everyone was questioned, not as suspects as usual, but just to kind of get an idea of who Maria was, what her routine was, like what, like what kind of person she is, because police don't know her. So all of Maria's like friends and family were asked if she had any known enemies and none of them knew any, like she wasn't the type to have arguments with people. So none of them really mentioned anything, apart from Joe Corp, who straight up mentioned his mistress, Tanya Herman. But Joe wasn't so honest about their relationship. He said that Tanya was an ex-girlfriend of his that was still obsessed with him and she just didn't like Maria. So police went and spoke to Tanya because this is really suspicious, this is a big thing. So they went and spoke to Tanya Herman and while Joe said that she was an ex, Tanya Herman told the police the truth that they were engaged and they were going to be married. And this was, as you can imagine, an immediate red flag for police. Joe must be lying about their relationship. Tanya has no reason to lie and say that they're engaged. Like, what is she going to get out of lying about that? Whereas Joe does have a reason to lie and say that, oh no, we're not engaged, she's just crazy because he doesn't want his family to turn against him. He doesn't want to look like the cheating husband when his wife's just gone missing. So like I said, Joe tried to explain this away by saying that Tanya was just a crazy ex. She was obsessed with him. She was delusional. She thought that they were still together. She would constantly like stalk him. He really tried to paint Tanya as a bad person. So still four days after Maria's disappearance, she had still not been found or seen or no one had come forward to give any information. She was literally just disappeared into thin air for four days and everyone was so confused. And so at this point, police thought maybe we should start treating this more as a murder inquiry. They hadn't officially turned it into a murder inquiry yet because it had only been four days and they just kind of, I don't know, they just didn't officially say it was yet, but they started doing different things that made everyone around them think Maria was not safe. They decided to search Tanya Herman's home, Tanya's car, the house that Maria and Joe shared together, her work. They were searching everything and this really worried Maria's family, thinking that maybe they were looking for evidence for a murder. On February 13th, 2005, four days after Maria's disappearance, a local park worker in Melbourne noticed that there was the same car parked on the side of the road for four days straight and it hadn't moved, no one had been to it or anything. So he went over to the car to check it out to see if it had like been broken into or whatever and when he did, when he got closer to it, he noticed a really strong bad smell coming from the car. And fearing the worst or fearing the unknown, like what the hell this smell could have been, he called the police. Police arrived quickly, they noticed that the car hadn't been broken into, it was all completely fine but they also noticed this really bad smell. And so they tried to break into the car. They specifically broke into the boot of the car. So they broke into the boot of the car and there they found what they thought to have been a barely identifiable dead body. The body was in terrible physical condition. It smelled horrific. It had been in the boot of that car in the heat of the summer for four whole days. They thought that there was no way that this body was still alive. It looked dead, it smelt dead, it was in the boot of this car for four days in the blistering heat and so they were going to just call someone to come and take this body back to a morgue and that was when they saw the chest move. It looked like this person whose body was in the boot took a really strained breath and so police panicked and quickly called an ambulance to take it to the nearest hospital and see if they could resuscitate this person. So an ambulance came and transferred the body to the nearest hospital and it was then when this body was identified as that of Maria Corp. And incredibly, Maria was still alive. She was in very severely critical condition. She was so close to death. Had she been in that car boot just a couple more hours, she could have died. So I'm just gonna read you off a list of all the kind of injuries that Maria had to her because they thought that she was dead when they found her. She was in such a bad, physical way. She had nine blood clots and pressure sores, she had a battered face, a broken arm, she appeared to have been strangled at some point so she had like marks all around her neck, 
she was severely dehydrated and suffered oxygen starvation to the brain which meant she had severe brain damage and she wasn't responding when they got her to hospital. So immediately Maria was put into a medically induced coma to help the hospital staff kind of like treat her different things at once. So she was being hydrated, she was trying they were trying to reverse the brain damage like they were doing so many things on her at once that she needed to be in a coma so immediately this story was huge news in the media i mean a woman had just been found in the boot of her own car that was maria's own car and she'd been there for four days almost dead so quickly the press began digging around trying to find information about this woman in the boot which is what the media called her and quickly they found out about her broken home life they found out that her husband had an extra woman on the side a whole fiance as well as his wife and obviously this was a huge part of the case everyone thought that they were guilty even though there was no specific evidence in the public yet everyone just assumed that it had to be them and so tanya and joe pretty much became like celebrities in Melbourne and obviously the police thought the same thing the police thought that Joe and Tanya were very suspicious just from the family circumstances they didn't have any specific evidence to say that either of them did anything but they had a motive to want to get rid of Maria and so police began digging around with them questioning friends families taking phone records and police finally gathered enough evidence to have reasonable grounds to bring them into the police station for questioning as suspects so tanya was the first to be questioned out of her and joe and police quickly realized that tanya had a very dependent personality she was very vulnerable she was very dependent on joe tanya leanne herman had been through two previous marriages the first of which ended in her husband having an affair and the second of which ended in her husband actually passing away leaving tanya a widow tanya herself actually previously had a form of cancer which was successfully treated but the whole time she was going through treatment and even then in the present day she never told her family. No one in her family knew that Tanya ever had cancer. She had two children, she had parents, she had tons of friends, she had work colleagues. None of them knew, none of them ever knew. But obviously she underwent treatment which meant that her hair was falling out. And so she actually shaved her head herself and said that she was doing it for charity. After the death of her second husband and after her cancer, Tanya was very depressed. She was in a very low, lonely point in her life and she was barely leaving the house, she was barely seeing her friends or family or anything, and so she decided to do some online dating so that she could meet people, but she could still do it from home. It was on there where she met Joe Corp, and she didn't actually know that he was married at first. Obviously, he didn't put that he was married on his dating website profile. So they went on a few dates, they were getting pretty serious at this point, and then she found out he had a wife and kids back at home and she wanted to break up with him, but at the same time, she didn't want to lose him. She'd been through so much in her life, so much pain, that she couldn't face losing another person. And so even though he was married, he had children, he had a whole other life apart from her. She just, she didn't have as much self-respect as she once had, and so she just stayed with him anyway. She settled for less. Joe was selling Tanya an absolute dream. He was telling her that they were gonna have this amazing life together, they were gonna run off together, have kids together, live together. She changed her legal name on like legal documents to Tanya Herman Corp and they actually both went shopping for wedding rings together at one point. So this isn't me trying to justify Tanya's actions of going off with a married man and getting engaged to a married man. I'm just trying to show you how how this was possible in her head to want to do this she had such low self-esteem after so much loss in her life and she'd been through so much she was depressed she'd had cancer she'd gone through so much in her life that her self-esteem was so low that she didn't think she deserved more than a married man she didn't think that she deserved her own man her own life her own family she felt like this is what she deserved and she was just gonna take it because she liked this one and she didn't want to lose another person in her life and she needed that kind of emotional gratification she'd been alone for so long that finally when someone came along and started calling her beautiful saying that they loved her she needed that she was a very dependent person a very vulnerable person and she couldn't face losing joe at this point point. and tanya herself realized that she was being manipulated in a way she knew that joe knew that she was very vulnerable very weak very dependent 
and Joe would pry on that and Tanya knew this and she was okay with this because like I said her self-esteem was so low that she put up with so much from him. This is a quote that Tanya Herman told police. I think I was sort of brainwashed by him because I was so in love with him and he used to promise me the world. Joe used to tell Tanya that she only looked good in black, she didn't look good in any other colours and so Tanya started wearing almost exclusively black clothing. Joe told her that he didn't like her friends and so she cut off contact with every single one of her friends. She barely had any friends at this point because of Joe. He was ruining her life. He made Tanya sell her house in Victoria and move to Melbourne to be near them. And she actually lived in the same neighborhood as Joe and his wife Maria and his children with her kids. And obviously Tanya enrolled her daughter at a new school in this new town. And when she did, she actually put Joe Corp down as one of her child's emergency contacts. And Tanya's daughter had been around Joe for so long at this point, she was so close to him that she started calling him dad. Tanya then went on to tell police that Joe had been saying weird things to her for weeks before now. He was saying things like, if only Maria was gone, and if you had to kill someone, how would you do it? Quickly, these kind of seemingly passing comments that Joe used to just like drop in every now and again, they were coming like real discussions, like real topics of conversation. And Joe expressed to Tanya that he wanted her, he wanted Tanya to kill Maria to get her out of the way so that they could go off and live their life together. So at this point, Tanya realized that they weren't just passing comments anymore, but she didn't think he was deadly serious. She thought, wow, he's got this really weird thought in his head, but she never thought for one minute that he actually wanted Tanya to commit murder for him. That was until one day when Joe returned home from work to Tanya's house and he'd actually brought a bag. And this bag has been nicknamed the how to get away with murder bag. This bag contained a swimming cap so no hairs were left at the scene, a ski mask to cover Tanya's face, gloves so there were no fingerprints, and a bag strap to strangle Maria with. At this point, Tanya began to freak out. She realized that Joe was for real and she was saying like, I can't do this. There is no way I'm gonna commit murder for you. And then Joe being the very manipulative person he is, turned around and started saying, oh well, I'll just go back to Maria then. If you don't wanna do this, then we can't be together. And I'm just gonna have to go back to Maria and I'm gonna have to cut off contact with you. And like I've said so many times, Tanya was at a point where she could not lose Joe. She was so low in herself. She had so much depression, so much, so low self-esteem that she had to be with Joe, even if it meant committing murder for him. She felt as if she had no other choice. She thought that the man that she loved and depended on, it wasn't just that she loved him, her life, her happiness, depended on this man. And she thought if she didn't commit murder, then he'd leave and what would happen to Tanya's life. Anyway, in Joe Corp's questioning, he was being very uncooperative. He was just mad at police saying I am her husband why would I ever do this to her and so he was just being very uncooperative in the questioning whereas if he was completely innocent like innocent people would just give their story if they knew it was going to help police they'd just give it and help them move on so in an attempt to try and get Joe to talk to them police decided to tell him Tanya's version of events and that was when Joe kicked off he was saying that Tanya was a pathological liar she was obsessed with him she hated Maria she wanted a gone and she'd just lied about this whole thing and it was all Tanya. But Tanya Herman's story correlated almost perfectly with all of the physical evidence and she had no reason to lie. She was sat there incriminating herself in this police station. She had no reason to lie about this. But Joe did have a reason to lie about this. He had a lot to lose in this situation and police just kind of believed Tanya more than they believed Joe at this point. Because Joe had already lied about a lot of things and we know that. He told them that Tanya was just a crazy ex that was obsessed with him when Tanya could prove that he'd proposed to her, she had the ring. So Tanya then began to tell police the story of the day that she murdered Maria Corp. On the morning of February 9th, 2005, Joe Corp came to pick Tanya up from her house and drove her to his house that he shared with Maria and let her into the garage. So then Joe drove off to work giving himself an alibi, but they forgot about Tanya's alibi and Joe didn't lie for her, obviously because he was at work. Tanya had no alibi. Joe's final words to Tanya before he left her in the garage there to kill his wife 
were how much do you love me? You can show me today. Don't let her out alive. So Joe let Tanya into the garage and Tanya went and hid in a dark corner where she couldn't really be seen and then Joe shut the garage door behind her and drove off to work. Tanya was wearing the swim cap so that her hair wouldn't get anywhere, balaclava so in case Maria did survive she couldn't tell who had done this to her. Tanya was also wearing Joe's shoes because obviously Joe lived in this house, there would be reason for his shoe prints to be around the house. So they thought about that as well. And she was also wearing white gardening gloves so that she didn't get any fingerprints anywhere, any like skin DNA, anything. So then Tanya was just waiting in this dark corner of the garage, waiting for Maria to come in and get in a car and go to work. And that was when Tanya was gonna attack. Before long, Maria came into the garage. She walked up to a car. She was getting ready to get into it to go to work as she did every day. And that was when Tanya Herman came up behind her with the bag strap that Maria's husband gave her and strangled her with it from behind. Tanya described it at this point as like an out of body experience. It, she felt really detached. It was like she was watching someone else murder someone. She didn't feel like she was doing it. At one point during the altercation, Maria managed to turn round and pull the mask up a little bit. And that was when she saw the identity of her attacker. Tanya Herman. Eventually Maria stopped struggling and Tanya thought she'd killed her but she'd actually only passed out. So Tanya panicked and just put Maria's body in the trunk of Maria's own car and just drove. Joe told her to just drive and dump the body as far away from the house as she possibly could but he didn't like suggest anywhere to her and in her panic state of mind she just drove. She just drove and drove and drove didn't know where she was going. Tanya drove for miles until she started hearing murmurs coming from the trunk of the car and she was already in panic mode and this just sent her above and beyond and she just thought, I have to dump this body now. She realised that she hadn't actually killed Maria and so she thought, well, how am I gonna kill her? I can't kill her, so I'm just gonna have to dump her. So Tanya was panicking and she was driving and then she saw this kind of like deserted, quiet road. So she just drove onto this road, she left the car, locked it, ran away and left Maria's body there in the trunk of her own car to be found four days later. Tanya then took Joe Corp some lunch at work. She took him a sandwich and they sat and ate it in Joe's car. And then Tanya went home and burnt the clothes that she was wearing that day. And police had no reason to doubt Tanya's story. Like why would she be going into this much detail about a murder that she didn't commit? Like she was incriminating herself with every single detail that she was saying. Why would she be lying about this? So now police believe that Joe Cop had to be an accessory to the attempted murder of his wife Maria. But obviously Joe had a completely different story. He said that he was at work that day as normal. He'd left Maria in the house as he did every single day because he went to work before she did. And he was just at work when Tanya Herman arrived, his crazy ex-girlfriend, and she'd brought him dinner. So he said as well that they sat in his car and just ate this dinner and he was telling her, look, you're gonna have to leave me alone. You can't keep coming to my work like this. He said he gave her a frosty reception. He wasn't overly friendly with her. And he said, I'm trying to make things work with Maria leave me alone. But there is one piece of evidence that does kind of back up Joe's claims that Tanya was just a crazy ex, he had nothing to do with it, she just hated Maria and wanted her gone. Maria's body was actually found without her wedding ring on a finger and she wore it every day and this wedding ring has never been found again. And if you think about it, the wedding ring would be the perfect like trophy for the crazy ex-girlfriend to keep after she just murdered her boyfriend's wife. And like I said, this ring's never been found. No one knows where it is. Like it wasn't anywhere near the body. So who knows? However, it doesn't mean that she acted alone. Like Joe could have still done it. It doesn't put him in the clear whatsoever. On June the 8th, 2005, it was four months after the incident and Maria Cop was still in that medically induced coma. She was making very, very slow progress, but it was happening. And at this point, police had enough evidence from questionings, from physical evidence to Tanya's own confession that Tanya and Joe definitely had a part in Maria's attempted murder and so they were put on trial for it. Tanya Leanne Herman pled guilty to all of her charges and she was sentenced to 12 years with the possibility of parole after nine years. Joe Corp was trialed for conspiracy to murder that same day as Tanya Herman 
but he pled not guilty and so a further trial had to be scheduled where they'd get in a jury. Meanwhile Maria Corp was still in this medically induced coma and up until now she'd been making very very slow progress, doctors had been doing everything they could and she was making slight improvements but at this point she just started to deteriorate. So on July 26, 2005 the decision was made to stop treating Maria. So she was still in this medically induced coma but obviously she isn't conscious to be able to feed herself, to be able to give herself water and so they cut off her kind of food supply, her water supply that was being fed into her from tubes. And this sparked a lot of controversy which I'm not actually going to get into in this video because I feel like it's very just like not related to the case itself. Like I just kind of want to keep this video to the case but a lot of people felt that that was very unethical just to kind of cut off her water and her food and just kind of starve her to death. And that is what they did. They euthanised her, they stopped feeding her until she starved to death on the 6th of August 2005. Maria actually passed away with Joe Corp sat at her bedside. The man that had planned her murder, the reason that she was there laid in bed dying, was sat at the side of her. She had no say in it because she was in a coma. She couldn't say, no, I don't want him here. He was just there while she died. Joe had managed to get a supervised visit because at the end of the day, it was still his wife, he still loved her, claimed to love her, and so they let him spend her last moments with her. So now that Maria Corp had passed away, this was officially a murder case, no longer an attempted murder case. And because Tanya Herman was already sentenced at this point, she couldn't actually be re-sentenced. So she was sentenced for an attempted murder, but they couldn't bring her back and then add on time to a sentence for an actual murder case now. I don't quite know why. It's something to do with you can't be sentenced for the same crime twice and obviously she was sentenced once and then the situation changed and she can't be sentenced again. I talked about it in my Hannah Hill video, I'll link that up there. I can't remember what it's called, I'm sorry. However, because Joe Cop pled not guilty at his trial, he could now be tried for murder because he hadn't been sentenced yet. Had he pled guilty in the first place, he would have got a much shorter sentence than what he was looking at now. So Maria Corp's funeral was held on August the 12th, 2005, and Joe Corp was actually banned from going to the funeral by Maria's friends and family. And so Joe decided to hold his own funeral at the house that he shared with Maria, and he invited all the press and all these different news reporters. There he got drunk and he sang for them, he sang like a few different songs and then the news reporters left and Joe, still in his drunken state, called up his ex-wife and another news reporter saying that he was gonna kill himself. So obviously both Joe's ex-wife and this news reporter contacted the police saying, look, I've got this man on the phone, he says he's gonna kill himself. And so the police set off to Joe Corp's address. So the police got to Joe Corp's house and they were stood outside and they could actually see him through the garage window, standing on top of a ladder with a rope around his neck on the phone to his solicitor threatening to do it. Suddenly Joe looked outside of the window and we don't know whether it was the shock of seeing the police, whether they made him jump or whether that was his trigger, but suddenly he looked like he was losing his footing on the ladder, looked like he lost his balance and then he fell to his death. So the theory is that Joe Corp didn't actually want to die, he didn't actually want to kill himself, he was just trying to use that to get sympathy to try and make his trial shorter. Joe would have probably got a much lesser sentence had the jury seen how sad he was over his wife's murder. The jury might have thought, well, he can't possibly have had a part in this. If he's that sad over her death, why would he want to cause it in the first place? And he thought, well, it's the theory that maybe he thought that if he acted suicidal, they'd go easier on his sentence. Something that might back up this theory that maybe Joe didn't actually want to die and maybe he just fell by accident was that the police saw him fall from this ladder and they reported that it wasn't like a quick kick over of the ladder, it wasn't like a jump off. He looked like he lost his balance, lost his footing and then fell and started like flailing as if he'd accidentally fallen off this ladder. And another thing is that this rope was really long. He was actually only hanging three centimetres from the floor. Had this rope just been a little bit longer, his life would have been saved. And I don't want to sit here and say that this man wasn't suicidal because we don't know. But often if someone is going to commit suicide in such a way, they would check the length of the rope. They would make sure 
that they wouldn't be able to stand up, you know? Because if someone is going to try and hang themselves, they do want to die. They don't want to hit the ground and survive, you know what I mean? So they would probably test out the length of this rope and make sure that they were quite a way off the ground. I don't know, but like I said, I don't want to sit here and say Joe wasn't suicidal because we don't know. So I'll let you guys decide what you think. Surrounding Joe when he died were pictures of Maria all over the floor and a bunch of notes that were just kind of describing how he was innocent, how much he loved Maria. After Joe Corp's death, police came out and publicly said that they think that Joseph Corp did have a part in the murder of Maria Corp. In January of 2013, eight years into her sentence, Tanya Herman actually applied for permission to marry a fellow inmate prisoner Nicole Muscat. Then on February 14th 2014, Valentine's Day, over eight and a half years after her original sentencing, Tanya Herman was let out early for good behaviour. And the person that picked her up from prison was her fiance Nicole Muscat and they drove off together and they are now living a happy life together. Like, Tanya Herman's got a whole new life after murdering someone. But yeah, that completes this case. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a big thumbs up down below because that really helps me out. And subscribe if you want to see some more content like this. Like I said at the beginning of the video, please comment down below any cases from any specific countries that you want me to cover because I am really trying to cover, like, different places. Did that make sense? Probably not. So yeah, just let me know in the comments down below. So thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.